Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Man's No Bull Beer Views. Today I have a beer from a new brewing company that I have not done a beer for uh, a beer review for yet. Um, they're not a new brewing company, but uh, I'm, they're new to me as far as doing reviews for them. Um, this is from Surly Brewing Company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, they just started distributing to South Carolina, but uh, I think a couple places, I know at least Salud where I got this, they drove down, I think they, I don't know if they drove down there, or maybe they are distributing in North Carolina too, but I heard they were just in South Carolina, but some places uh, down by the border in North Carolina got some, um, so, and that was within the last month, uh, this was, so today's the 18th of October, this is canned on 10-11, so this is literally a week old, which you know, from Minnesota down to South Carolina, it's pretty awesome to get something that's canned a week a week ago. So that's props to Surly for you know, if they're opening it in a new place, they're sending out legit fresh stuff. So that's great. Uh, but this is uh, their Todd the Axe Man. It's uh, an IPA <clears throat> brewed with Golden Promise, Citra, and Mosaic. Um, I have had this beer a bunch of times. I'm a huge, huge fan of it. I haven't had it in a while, and I'm so excited to do a review for it. Uh, anytime I'm in Chicago, they get surly. Um, I've never been to Minnesota, but anytime I'm in Chicago and I see this or uh, Surly Abrasive, one of their double IPAs, I always, always get it because I love these beers. Um, but I was super excited to see this distribute down here and that it was really, really fresh. Um and so the funny thing about this beer too, it's called Todd the Axe Man because it was named after um, their original brewer who was, uh, I guess, a, a big metal guitarist. Um, but he works at Three Floyds now and they still make this beer. I know Surly and Three Floyds have always been like friends and uh, they do a bunch of collaborations together. So I, I'm, I guess that makes sense that, you know, that they still are copacetic with each other. But I still think it's kind of odd that they have a beer named after a guy that doesn't even work anymore. But anyways, I'm I'm glad that they uh, still make the beer in general. And I'm super glad that I can get it in South Carolina. I don't know if this is going to be a consistent thing or if it's just they're going to do one-off can drop type thing. I have a feeling it might be more along the lines of that. But that's probably better because that means that it's not going to be sitting on the shelf and it's not going to be old. So... All we need is some coffee bender. I would love to get some of that. But anyways, uh, I'm going to crack this open. See what we got. I, I have not had this in probably two years maybe. Because um, that's the last time, two years ago was the last time I was in Chicago. And that was the last time I had it. Um, actually, I specifically remember the last time I had this was at uh, O'Cheval in Chicago. Um... And if you've never been there and you go to Chicago or ever go to Chicago, it is the best burger in the world. Um, that's my opinion, and I, it's been on a bunch of lists too, but I've also heard their other food is amazing. Never gotten anything else besides the burger, but uh, if you're in Chicago, go to Ocheval. It's freaking amazing, and they also have good beer on tap, and this is the last time I drank it at Ocheval. So... Unlike most IPAs uh, nowadays, this is uh, pretty uh, pretty clear. You know, um, it's like very very slightly cloudy, but you can definitely you know see my finger through there, which is obviously rare. Uh, pretty small white head. Um, I guess it's I would call it an amber color. Excuse me. super fresh uh, citra and mosaic character um, a lot of uh, peach rings and overripe and pineapple um, there is some very slightly um, like caramely malt in there uh, a little bit of that um, that cat pea character that uh, some people get from mosaic which I definitely do a lot uh, but it's not uh, super pungent. Honestly, it just smells like a really great uh, like Midwest IPA. So 
Can't wait to dive in. Oh yeah. Now, that is the only, I guess, downside if there is one to these types of IPAs, is you really do have to get them pretty fresh. Uh, because this is tasting awesome right now, but I have a feeling probably in a month, this is uh, the hops are going to start falling off and it's it's going to be like pretty caramely, which I, you know, you don't really want in an IPA, obviously. Uh, but this is so balanced. It's uh, It does have a little bit of that peach and pineapple, um, but almost like a, there's a little bit of candied orange and it has a little bit of uh, like a floral bouquet as well. Uh, it's super super light too uh which is kind of crazy for 7.2 percent but i i would honestly peg this as like a pale ale it's very drinkable i honestly don't remember this being uh this uh like light bodied i'm not complaining about it though i mean it, it's and when i say light bodied i just mean it's easy to drink i'm not saying it's watery it's super flavorful <laughs> excuse me uh Really, this this reminds me of a Fatheads beer. But in my opinion, Fatheads is the absolute king of non-hazy IPAs. Uh, <clears throat> and that's not to say that hazy IPAs are better than what they're doing. I just like to separate those two things. Um, I don't think anyone makes better... Uh, clean IPAs and fatheads. I, I just don't. Uh, Russian River, maybe. Uh, but again, the last couple times I played the Elder, they were probably bottles that didn't really get treated very well. Uh, of course, when I have it on, when I've had it on tap, it's still fantastic. Um, but they, you know, they make that and they do uh, Blind Pig. But other than that, when unless they do like one-offs, uh, Row Two Hill Fifty Six or whatever it's called. Uh, that beer's amazing, by the way. Uh, they don't really do too, too many uh, different hoppy beers. But Fatheads, other than, you know, Juju and Headhunter, obviously, um, they do a bunch of one-offs that are also always great. Uh, but I guess I, I should, shouldn't really be talking about Fatheads anymore. I'm just talking about Surly. Uh, so they, at least with this drop that they did, they had this and uh, Furious. And Furious is another IPA that they make. That was like their... So Todd the Axeman, they didn't originally have this like when they first opened. Um, I think it was probably a couple years before they brewed this for the first time. It's been around for probably like five years now. But Furious was their their OG like turnkey IPA. And I always thought it was good, but I also thought it was overrated because that beer's like really classic almost like east coast ipa like it had a good amount of like fresh hop character but it was very malty uh this is a little drier than that and that's why i always like this better um in my in my opinion abrasive is their best hoppy beer their double ipa it is super it's like this but a little more dry and more alcohol um like, it's even probably lighter colored than this. It's very, very light, but it's super flush with hops, but really, really clean at the same time. Uh, I love, love, love that beer, and I really hope that they distribute that down here, too. That would be fantastic. Um, but I'm just glad to be able to get this beer, too, because it's uh, very, very good. Sometimes you get tired of haze, and you just want something super clean and this fits the bill um so if there are any of uh any listeners who are local in charlotte uh either go to southern spirits which is in south carolina i know they got a bunch um and when i got this today at salute they had 
it looked like four or five cases of uh, the four packs, four pack boxes. <laughs> Apologize, I. I'm starting to get really congested. I don't. I don't think I'm actually getting sick. I think it's just because I started using the heat and I need to clean out my vents and stuff. Um, but I can still smell the beer pretty well. But I, I just look, feel a little congested. But yeah, if if you're local in Charlotte, um, definitely go and grab this before it's gone. I don't know how long it's gonna last. Get it while it's fresh, and it's probably gonna be gone soon anyway. So I, I think this was like 17 bucks for a four pack. In my opinion. This is probably one of the best, like, not, it's not completely nationally distributed, but one of the best beers that's out, outside of North Carolina that I can, one of the best IPAs that was brewed outside of Carolina that I can get in North Carolina. Um, this is really, really good. Uh, I honestly could drink this all the time if I had access to it, but there's so many other local IPAs that are getting distributed that I probably won't buy it that often, but every once in a while when I just get that that urge to drink uh, something really clean as opposed to the haze, I might go back to this. So definitely worth picking up. And if even if you're not in, the, in this area, if you see it and you've never had it before, get it. It's a great, great IPA. That's all I got in this one. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.